Hello everyone, this is Archie from ICSA, and I've guessed that you just finished learning more about the introduction to digital graphics. Now, on this lesson, we'll be discussing more about Photoshop and how to use it for beginners. So the first lesson that we'll be discussing is more about the interface of Photoshop, also how to use the Move tool. So first, I would like to discuss more about the home screen of Photoshop that you are seeing right now. So open a picture that you want. You can go on File and then pass on Open. You can also go here and this button right here, it does the same thing. So we'll open one picture. In our case, it will be the exercise which is located in our desktop, Photoshop 2020 book exercises. And then you just need to select the number three exercise, which is called Move Tool. To open that one, you'll find a folder called Materials. This is where we'll get all the materials for our design. You click on that. And here we have three files. So the first file that we want to open is called a PSD format, which means a Photoshop document. Just open that one and press on Open at the bottom. So here is the file once we open it. I know for beginners that it will be very confusing at first on what everything is here. Like for example, on the right side, there's many things that we are seeing and also on the left and also on the top. So I would like to take my time to discuss with you on what each one of these does so you'll have a better understanding on how to use them. So first of all, we have what we call here the toolbar in the left side section. The toolbar is where you can find all of the tools that will help you design along the way. So in our lesson, we'll be discussing more about the move tool for now. But throughout the course, we'll be discussing all about these tools one by one. Okay, so next of, that I want to discuss is called the tabs area. So this tabs area is uh, where you will find all of the files that you open for Photoshop. So for example, if we go on file and press on new, what you'll notice is that you will be greeted with this page where you will be having an option to choose what type of file size or canvas size that you want for your design. So for example, if we go on print section, you'll find all of the basics uh, print sizes or paper sizes that you can use. For example, if you click on A4 and click on Create, what will happen is it will make a new tab. So currently we have two tabs, which is one for the file that we opened just earlier, and then one that is just now. Okay, so to close one tab, you just press on the X button like this. Okay, so again, this is what we call the tab. Next up, uh, on the top section, we call this one the property bar. It is one of the most important bars in Photoshop since it allows you to change the property of the tools on the left side. So for example, if I select the text tool, which of course you don't know how to use it for now, but that's fine since we're going to have a lesson on that in the future. For example, if we click on the text tool, what you'll notice is the property bar will change. And if I click on the move tool, the move tool Will also change the property bar. So these two, the property and the toolbar is connected. So whatever tool you select, for example, again, I'll select the text tool. You'll notice now I'll have an option here for the font, what type of font it is, what is the size, and what is the color of the text. If I want to select the shape tool, for example, I'll be having a different option on the property bar for the fill, and the outline of the shape. So this is where you can control the property of how a tool functions. Okay? So in the most top point of your screen, we call this one the menu bar. Okay? In the menu bar, we have a lot of options uh, such as file, edit, image, layer, and so on. So this is where you can find a lot of function that will help you design as well in your work. But the most common thing that we'll be accessing for the first lesson will be the file only. Next lessons, we'll be discussing more about the edit, image, and layer, and so on. 
so that way you'll have a better understanding. But just make sure to remember that this whole collection is called the menu bar or application bar. It has two names actually. So whatever uh, you want to call it, it is fine. Okay. So the next side we have here is called the palettes. Okay. The palettes is very customizable depending on the work that you're doing. For example, if we have a work that requires us to use a lot of colors or to use a swatches or a gradient, then you can easily find it on the right side. If you don't want the palette or the palette is too much for you to handle, you can just simply right click on one of the palettes and close it. So close and again, I'm going to click on right click, close and also in the gradient, right click, close and also the pattern. So click close. So the next thing that we're, we're going to do is close everything to make it minimal because I know for beginners, it is very difficult for them to try and uh, remember all of these things. So we're just going to try and minimize it. So I want you to follow along and uh, do it with me. So I'm just going to right click, close, and also right click, close, and we're going to close everything except for one palette called the layers. This is very important and you will know why in a later lesson on why we don't need to close it, okay? So also in the channels, we need to close it and also on the path. So in the path section or in the layer section, uh, this is where we can access all of the layers, which we'll find out in the Lexus and how to use it. But in this section, we'll just focus on how to use the move tool first, okay? So move tool, what it does is it, you, it allows you to move an object anywhere in the canvas. So for example, if I select on the move tool, okay, you can also press the shortcut key, which is called V. If I drag one of the objects here, you can see it will move with it. Okay. If I select one of the prices here, it will also move. Okay. So whatever object that you drag along with it, it will move according to the direction that you drag it in. So for example, if I drag it on the left, this whole thing will move on the left. Okay, and uh, one of the most common questions is how do I zoom in and zoom out in Photoshop? I'm just going to hold the Alt key. We also have a dedicated subject or we also have a dedicated exercise for that one, which is in lesson two. So hopefully you have watched that one already. Okay, so again, to zoom in, I will just need to hold the Alt and then zoom in using the mouse wheel up. And if you want to zoom out, you just scroll down using the mouse wheel down like this. Okay. If you want to pan around, just hold the space bar on the keyboard. You'll notice that the cursor will have a hand icon, which you can then drag it anywhere in your canvas. Okay. So if you're fully zoomed in, like for example here, and you want to go back to normal view, what you can do is just go ahead and press control zero on the keyboard. It will allow you to make it default view. And uh, one more tip, if you want to make your design full screen, you can just press F on the keyboard and it will hide everything on your design. So for example, you want to hide the um, menu, you want to hide the layers, you can also do that by pressing F. And if you want to exit, just press on F key again, okay? So in this lesson, we just need to organize everything. So it's very simple, very easy to follow. You just need to drag the object, uh, whatever you want, no problem, as long as you can practice it. So I'm just going to drag all of the objects here and uh, make sure that it is aligned um, like this. So most common question is, for example, if I want to make this logo right here smaller than the rest, what I you can do is by pressing Control T on the keyboard. So Control T will allow you to be on what we call a transformation mode, which is by pressing again Control T, and uh, these lines will show up. So once this line show up, what you can do is just drag it at the bottom, like this, downwards. If you want to drag it, you need to drag it diagonally upwards. It will become bigger. So again, smaller and big. So if you want to make some things uh, rotate, what you do here is you go outside of the cursor or in the box and you can see the cursor will change into like a rotated icon and you just need to simply 
drag it like this. Okay. So you drag it and you place it on the corner. Whichever corner you want, no problem. Because this is an exercise that will let you practice uh, your designing skills as well. Okay. So I'm just going to place it here and drag it this one here. And also make things bigger here on this side. Okay. So you simply just need to organize everything like this and like that. And uh, you can see here at the bottom also the shape is not uh, in proper. Uh, you can see here there's a bit of gap on the right side. So I'm, again, I'm gonna press Ctrl T and resize it just like that. Okay. Then uh, of course this car also you need to resize it. So I'm just gonna drag it like this. Okay. So whatever your design is, it's fine. Just try to organize it. So I'm going to put this price tag also at the center. And uh, what you'll notice is that my image is missing. We're missing one image here. So this is where how to import a picture comes in. So how do we import a picture for Photoshop? So to import a picture in Photoshop, it is a very easy process. You just need to go on File and then click on Place Embedded. Once you click on Place Embedded, it will allow you to choose a picture that you want to apply directly on the canvas. So in this case, we just need to double click on the chicken joy picture. Okay. And you can see it is placed automatically at the canvas, which is very nice. Okay. So you just place it here and uh, I'm just going to organize this one as well. Press control T again. I uh, will just transform and uh, you can see I can also rotate it just like this. Okay. So next, we will put this special promo in the center by just going here on this side. So this is how we can edit our picture by moving it and making it bigger, making it smaller, and transforming it using the Move tool and Free Transform. So hopefully you learned a lot in this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll be discussing more about the layers and how to use them. So thank you for your time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.